Hello, welcome to our introductory presentation on the Los Angeles County Safety Element Update. While we are not able to gather in person this year, we hope that these online events will facilitate easier access and greater collaboration. The Department of Regional Planning provides the land use planning services for the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. These unincorporated areas comprise 64% of the county's total land area, which spans from the mountains to the beaches to the deserts and the inland valleys. The unincorporated areas are shown in yellow in this map of Los Angeles County. Unincorporated areas do not have their own city charter, so their local government is the County of Los Angeles. There are about 1 million people who live in the unincorporated areas. Examples of unincorporated communities in Los Angeles County include East Los Angeles, Florence Firestone, and Lenox. The purpose of today's presentation is to provide background information on climate change hazards, the safety element update project, and the project timeline. We hope that this introductory presentation will provide you with information you will need to participate in the safety element update process. We will later discuss the timeline and the opportunities to provide input. This presentation will discuss the following topics. Uh, we'll introduce the safety element, discuss what is new in the safety element update, and how your community can start planning to adapt to climate change by participating in the safety element update. The goal of the safety element is to reduce the potential risk of death, injuries, property damage, economic loss, and the social dislocation resulting from natural and human-made hazards. The safety element currently has four sections, seismic and geological hazards, floods, fires, and emergency response. Earthquakes are the first thing that comes to mind when you hear of seismic and geotechnical hazards. Earth earthquakes can cause ground rupture, unstable soil, and landslides. More than 50% of the unincorporated areas are comprised of hilly or mountainous terrain. Most hillside hazards include mud and debris flows, active landslides that occur below the surface, hillside erosion, and human-induced slope instability. Flooding in Los Angeles County can be earthquake-induced or caused by climate change. Large underwater landslides have the potential to generate destructive tsunamis along coastal areas in LA County. The inundation of water caused by a catastrophic dam or aqueduct fa failure can devastate large areas and threaten residences and businesses. There are 85 dams in Los Angeles County that hold billions of gallons of water in reservoirs and seismic activity can compromise dam structures and result in catastrophic flooding. Climate change is expected to produce longer and more severe droughts due to higher average temperatures, as well as greater and more frequent floods from extreme precipitation. Global warming causes ocean temperatures to rise and glaciers to melt, which contributes to sea level rise. The increasing sea level rise can cause flooding in the coastal areas, especially during tidal events. Although fires are a natural part of the wildland ecosystem, building in wildland areas increases the danger of wildfires to residents, property, and the environment. Increased fire frequency is the primary threat to wildland ecosystems. Frequent flyers cause the types of vegetation that naturally grow in a certain area to change and encourage the spread of invasive species. Wildland fires threats are increasing in part due to climate change. The rise in temperatures and prolonged periods of drought increase the potential of fires igniting and may increase how often wildfires start and how long they burn. The county must also devote major resources to controlling potential fires hazards in urban areas because of the large number of residences and buildings. A catastrophic natural or human-made disaster 
has the potential to severely strain the emergency response and recovery capabilities and profoundly impact the economy. Continued growth and development in LA County will significantly affect services like the fire department and sheriff's department. Coordination amongst various county departments is necessary to ensure adequate emergency response. Collaboration can also ensure that the rate of development and the fire and police services needs are matched. Now that we've discussed what information can be found in today's safety element, we can talk about why we are updating it and what new information will be added. There are two main reasons for updating the safety element. First, the state of California passed new legislation requiring the safety element to address climate change and hazard risk reduction. Secondly, we are experiencing how climate change is impacting Los Angeles County. Seven of the 10 largest wildfires in California's history have occurred since the beginning of 2017. The Bobcat fire last year was the one of the largest in county's history. The heat wave in September 2020 resulted in the hottest temperature on record for the region. The drought that lasted from 2011 to 2017 was followed by an extremely wet winter in 2016 and 2017. These are all signs that the frequency of extreme weather events is becoming a part of our new normal and are likely to be significant and increase over time. The safety element's purpose is to reduce potential risk from hazards by preparing our communities in advance. So what climate hazards is Los Angeles County facing? According to the Los Angeles Region Report prepared by the California Fourth Climate Assessment, Southern California can expect more wildfires, extreme precipitation that, that can result in inland flooding, extreme heat, sea level rise that can result in coastal flooding, and also drought. These threats are typically referred to as climate hazards. The year 2020 has been challenging, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the climate hazards like wildfire and extreme heat that we have experienced here in LA County. What are secondary impacts? Climate impacts can cause direct harm to communities where the hazards are located, but it can also trigger secondary impacts that can also cause harm to other communities within the region. For example, the Bobcat fire that started in the San Gabriel Mountains last year affected the air quality not only in LA County, but also in the counties of Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Examples of other potential secondary impacts include an increase of vectors such as mosquitoes that may carry West Nile virus. After heavy storms, Mosquitoes proliferate because of the increase in stagnant pools of water where they can reproduce. Increased levels of ozone caused by extreme heat days. Ozone is a pollutant that can cause breeding difficulties for people who already have chronic health issues such as asthma. Valley fever in the high desert can increase when drought and development disturb the surface layer of the soil. When the soil is disturbed, dust storms can disseminate the fungal spores responsible for this illness. The goal of updating the safety element is to protect communities from the consequences of climate change by incorporating adaptation and resilience strategies. The purpose of these strategies is to help the county and its residents to adjust to climate change impacts and to reduce the harm. Example of adaptation strategies include maintaining defensible space, which is the practice of clearing the area near your home in a high fire risk region, um, making sure that it's free of vegetation that can burn. Another is to protect your home by stacking up sandbags to keep out the flood waters when heavy rains are predicted. Other examples are to purchase an air conditioner to insulate you from uh, heat from the heat during a heat wave, or to purchase a generator so that you have continued access to electricity uh, during a public safety power shutoff. 
Different communities are at different points when it comes to adapting to climate hazards. Some communities experience heightened exposure and increased sensitivity to climate change. They may also have less capacity and resources to adapt to and recover from climate hazards. These disproportionate effects may, cause, may be caused by physical, social, political, and economic factors. For example, not all households have access to internet or can afford high utility bills. Not everyone can make changes to their environment if they do not own the place where they live. These factors can also include, but are not limited to, race, class, sexual orientation and, and, and identification, national origin, community health status, and income inequality. We acknowledge these differences and are looking forward to hearing your stories so that we can develop adaptation and resilience strategies that can reduce the risk that your communities face. One story that was shared by Nancy from Edepska was how climate hazards are experienced differently by community members. She shared the story of how a vulnerable community not bound by geographic boundaries were impacted by the Woolsey fire. Many domestic workers, day laborers, and restaurant workers in the fire affected areas were Spanish only speakers. However, during the fire, communication from LA County was conducted mostly in English and over Twitter. The result was many workers were unable to receive information about how to get to safety because the language barrier and the different preferred communication channels. To learn about road closures and evacuation routes, these workers had to rely on news from others. In addition, some homeowners asked their workers to stay to protect their homes, further exposing them to harm. We learned from Nancy's story that the county's response did not reach workers. It was rather geared towards homeowners. After hearing this story, we recognized this gap that we need to address in the emergency response section. Here is a timeline for the safety element update. You will be able to engage with us and provide your input at different points of this process. This presentation is the introduction to the safety element and the purpose was to provide that background information and context to help set you up to be involved in the next steps of our project. There are two opportunities this summer to participate in this project. First is by commenting on the draft climate vulnerability assessment that will be released this summer. The climate vulnerability assessment will set a baseline of vulnerabilities that your community is experiencing. It is important that your input is provided so that this baseline accurately reflects the vulnerabilities that you experience on the ground. The next way is to participate is by attending our climate adaptation workshops that we will hold this summer in July. These workshops will provide you an opportunity to help shape the goals and policies that will be included in the draft safety element. Workshopping your ideas on what may be the best adaptation strategies will allow us to develop a safety element that reflects the needs of your communities. We anticipate releasing this draft safety element in the fall. At this point, your comments on the draft safety element will be to fine tune the proposed goals and policies. The public hearings at the Regional Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors are anticipated to start in the winter. All public hearings provide opportunities for pu public comments. We hope that this presentation provided useful information that heightens your awareness of vulnerabilities and adapt adaptation. We ask that you start collecting your stories and observations about how climate change is impacting your community. We also invite you to join our adaptation workshop in July and let us know how we can play a role in increasing your community's resilience. If you would like to find out more information about the safety element update, please visit our website at planning.lacounty.gov slash climate. You can also email us at planning at lacounty.gov.